Good morning. Good morning, good morning, everyone. No one. All y'all, some of y'all, none of y'all. <laughs> um, both of them, all of them, some of them, every one of them, right? Happy October 26th. Happy Hump Day Wednesday. We are talking about Jesus' powerful blood today. Oh, hallelujah. The most powerful. All powerful. There is nothing or no one that this blood can't cleanse and purify and clean and make worthy and make holy and make righteous. Be covered in it. Be covered in it today. Tomorrow might be too late, y'all. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13 says, You who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Like we said yesterday, before Christ, God sees our sin. After, with Christ, um, with his blood covering us, God looks at us and sees him, sees Jesus, sees Jesus' blood. And, you know, that brings us to his level in God's sight. Um, that makes us worthy. That makes us righteous. Nothing but the blood can do it. We can't do it by any means whatsoever. We can't. We absolutely cannot. Um, you know, he wouldn't have sent his only son. He wouldn't have had to drain out all his blood for us to cleanse us if there was any other way. So, the blood of Jesus Christ is the heart of the gospel, and rightly so. What does the blood of Jesus do for you? It cleanses. When you invite Christ into your life, his blood cleanses you and pumps through your spiritual veins with eternal life. Um, according to 1 John 1.7, his blood justifies you. Paul wrote that Christ justified us by his blood in Romans 5, verses 8 and 9. We are justified as though we had never sinned. And as I've heard it said, just as if I'd never sinned. Justified. Justified, never sinned. Praise God. Hmm. Blood reconciles. The Father takes pleasure in reconciling man to himself and bringing peace through the blood of his son's cross. I mean, that's why he did it. That's why he did it. That is his pleasure. Um, he counted us worth it to send his son. And that was in Colossians 1.20. Blood provides access. Christ's sacrifice replaced the animal sacrifice, no longer sufficient, giving us Full assurance of faith in the blood that Jesus shed for us. Hebrews 10 verses 19 through 22. So now we have full access to the Father's throne of grace. We can approach his throne boldly as his children. Hello? Into the throne room. The veil was torn. You know, there was a veil that only the priest could go past. Um, with the sacrifices into the most holy place and he better be right when he got in there or he would get drug out by the foot right dead as a doornail so this veil was torn literally torn when Jesus breathed his last breath and now we have that full access to God the Father through Jesus Christ through his blood as Jesus blood flows through us we are infused with life forever. John 6, verse 54. What does the Bible say about the most important characteristic of the blood of Jesus? I don't think he actually specifically said that. I mean, it's the difference in life and death. That's what it is. That's what stands out to me. Um, cleanses, justifies, reconciles, provides access. It is the heart of the gospel, and rightly so. You who once were 
far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Okay, let's look at Ephesians chapter 2. What does the Bible say about the most important characteristic of the blood of Jesus? Oh, I don't know why I went to that bookmark. It's not Mark in Ephesians. It's Mark in Haggai for some reason. Oh, because I left it there after I read Zechariah. Okay, Ephesians 2. And, 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 Philippians, that means there you are, Ephesians, right before Philippians. Number two, number two. And the heading of, at the beginning of number two says from death to life. You know, that was, that's my first uh, reaction, I guess, to that question. The most important characteristic of the blood of Jesus. I mean, it's, it's all powerful. It's perfect. He is perfect. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you previously lived according to the ways of this world. According to the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit now working in the disobedient. This sounds like we were in this not long ago. <laughs> we too all previously lived among them in our fleshly desires carrying out the inclinations of our flesh and thoughts and we were by nature children under wrath as the others were also who's saying you know this is the state absolutely everybody is in without the blood of Jesus but God but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love that he had for us made us alive with Christ even though we were dead in trespasses. You are saved by grace. He also raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus. So that in the coming ages he might display the immeasurable riches of his grace through his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For you are saved by grace through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is God's gift. Not from works, so that no one can boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. So then, remember that at one time you were Gentiles in the flesh, called the uncircumcised, by those called the circumcised, which is done in the flesh by human hands. So in other words, it's a work. It's not a saving act. It's a work. Just like all the other steps, a lot of religions require. Um, check out what the Bible requires. That's what you need to know, what the Lord requires. The things that he brings forth in you once you accept him and let him in, the changes he makes. That's how you know you're on the right road, not by what some... Whoever at whatever church told you you've got to do next. Line yourself with the Bible. With God's word. Um, so, that was the works. Where did I stop? Human hands. At that time you were without Christ, excluded from the citizenship of Israel and foreigners to the covenants of promise. Without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ for he is our peace who made both groups one and tore down the dividing wall of hostility in his flesh he made of no effect the law consisting of commands and expressed in regulations so that he might create in himself one new man from the two resulting in peace <clears throat> so that one new man into he kept the law it's not it's not that you don't keep the law it's not that you don't want to do um what god commands you to but it's that god realizes that your flesh can't that it's gonna fail sometimes and therefore he sent this perfect spotless all-powerful son of his this lamb this christ child this messiah to take your place um, 
and death so that you can join him in life. And um, he created the two by keeping the law, but also being the ultimate sacrifice that fulfilled the law. So he did this that he might reconcile both to God in one body through the cross by which he put the hostility to death in himself. He came and proclaimed the good news of peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So he's talking about both the uncircumcised and the circumcised. Remember that at one time you were Gentiles in the flesh, the uncircumcised. Um, you know, he's just saying, hey, it, what, you're, what you've done to your body is not what gets you where you need to be. It's what happened to Jesus' body. It's the sacrifice he made. Um, through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. Both, you know... Those who were keeping the law and those who were not. Barbarians, as they were called. Um, it is us. <laughs> those that are adopted in. So, so then, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone in him. The whole building being put together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. The whole building. The holy temple. The church. You know, we're each a temple of the Spirit of God. And together we are to be united as the bride of Christ. grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you are also being built together for God's dwelling in the Spirit. You tore down every kind of wall there ever was to make a way. Reminds me of the song of his reckless love. There's no mountain he won't climb up. Um... And, of course, that's the only line I remember now that I brought it up. Um, coming after you. But it's true. There's no length he won't go to. But don't keep running from him. Because time will run out. Okay, so that was Ephesians 2. Jesus' powerful blood. I stuck in there the parentheses, all powerful blood. Because, I mean, let's be clear. Let's be specific. Oh mess here. Okay, Lenny's clock is just a ringing I hear in there. and He's not making a move. <laughs> Alright, so Jesus powerful, all powerful blood. Be covered in it so that when God looks at you, he sees Jesus. It's the only way. It's the only assurance we have the only hope that there is it's the only thing that's going to last it's and that's going to make you last so y'all have a blessed day as you can see i kind of came to a loss of words there so i'm going to call it um good morning and see you guys tomorrow jesus loves you most end live now